With great power comes great responsibility. With all the generative AI capabilities coming to the Power Platform and other tools that we use, how do we ensure that these tools are being used responsibly? Well, Sadrick Golmart is here to show us how. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Low Code Revolution. I'm your host, April Dunham, and today we have Cedric Golmard, who's here to talk about responsible AI principles for Power Platform developers. Welcome to the show, Cedric. How are you doing today? Hi, April. Thanks for having me in the show. I'm super happy to talk about responsible AI with you today. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a big topic right now, so we're really happy to have you on the show. Now, before we dive into responsible AI, I know that you're a software engineer on the Power Automate team, and you've actually built a lot of the cool AI announcements that we've seen or helped build in Power Automate in particular. So I was hoping maybe before we dive into responsible AI, you could talk a little bit about the current AI landscape in the Power Platform, kind of what's what's happened, what we've seen evolve, and what's there today and all of that, and why they're important for developers. Sure. Let me share my screen uh, and show you how we are infusing AI in low code uh, for the past years in the Microsoft Power Platform. Uh, Microsoft Power Platform gives developer all the AI power, no code abilities to innovate and accelerate. So there are some examples of AI powered no code experience. For example, building a cloud flows uh, by simply describing them with natural language. This accelerates uh, building automation. Uh, Express Design in Power Apps has enabled makers to automatically create apps interfaces by drawing or providing images, uh, boosting conversations uh, in Power Virtual Agent is a new way to give the bot the ability to find information even if you have not created a topic. And of, of course, there are all the AI builder AI capabilities available with no code. Uh, including the new Azure OpenAI pre-built model in AI Builder. So all of these features that enable developers to create innovative solutions faster and easier with natural language and low-code experience. Uh, as you notice, this year is the best year uh, to mm -hmm. talk about AI and responsible AI. Uh, it will definitely mark a critical inflection point for artificial intelligence and no-code and low-code. All these features that enable developers to create solutions uh, faster and easier with natural language and low-code experiences. Uh, this year is the best year to uh, discuss AI, responsible AI, and low-code. Uh, this is an inflection point for artificial intelligence, uh, and the opportunities for people are huge. And they are even bigger for those of us who develop this technology or just build on top of it. And this is where a responsible AI comes into play. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love the slide that you have here that really shows the evolution of all of the interjections of AI that we've seen in the Power Platform. I know we, uh, I think this month, of course, we had the most uh, announcements here. I was really excited to see some of the things come into Power Virtual Agents and all the, the co-pilot-like integrations with generative AI. It's really changing the game and transformational for how we develop applications, um, really just Changing, changing that up and making it easier for anyone to, to kind of build apps with these features. Now, I think it's one of those things, there's a there's a movie there, I think with our quote is, with great uh, power comes great responsibility. Um, so I think that's where um, responsibly AI kind of comes in with all these great you know, functionalities that we have with generative AI and all that being interjected into the tools that we use now. Um, what does that mean for as far as, you know, how do we make sure we're using the, these tools responsibly? So could you touch on what that means, what responsible AI is and why it's important for us to consider as developers using these tools? Of course. First of all, responsible AI is not limited to data scientists. We're all using and building with AI now. So we should all be empowered to use and build AI responsibly. Um, you, you talked about all the generative AI and new things coming every day um, in, in, the, in the past weeks. Uh, so even if we make creative solutions with no code, we should think about how we will interact with AI and its outcome. Uh, for example, uh, these new generative AI models, uh, they create wonderful content, which may contain uh, mistakes or approximations. And we've seen uh, examples uh, of convincing yet factually incorrect generated texts. Uh, for this reason, 
it's necessary to review the generated content before we use it in our business applications, for example. Uh, another example uh, is the AI you're using may behave extremely good for one specific task, uh, but in certain circumstances uh, may produce incorrect results. And we want to be able to detect this situation to improve the underlying model. Uh, and there we can act responsibly to improve the AI and have a better impact with AI. The first step is simply to understand the capabilities and the limitation of the AI uh, that we will build or use. Uh, this way, we can act to fix, uh, control, or put in place mitigations uh, regarding these limitations. So you asked me, what is responsible AI? Mm -hmm. After all, responsible AI is a set of principle and practices um, that Microsoft has developed to help us responsibly use AI at every stage of innovation. Uh, these are both principles, uh, but also uh, actual tools, libraries, uh, technical um, piece of code and algorithm we use to make sure that AI behaves as expected. Uh, but it's also a set of governance practices, for example, uh, that we could use in any organization. All teams within Microsoft um, apply our responsible AI principle, and we encourage our users to also apply these principles to design, develop, and use AI in accordance with their organization values. Uh, maybe you want a quick uh, maybe you want a quick walkthrough uh, uh, on the responsible AI principles. There are six of them. Fairness. Uh, fairness is about making sure that the model behaves the same way with all people. Reliability and safety, as for all products we want to have, um, we want AI to be uh, safe to use. Privacy and security is important, uh, and AI systems and AI products should also respect privacy and security. Inclusiveness, we want people to be at the center of AI and we want everyone to be empowered by AI. Uh, when we design or create AI system, uh, we want it to take into account the diversity uh, of people and situation that uh, the AI could encounter so it can address them. And this is how uh, inclusiveness uh, is implemented. Transparency, uh, this one is extremely important too, is how we understand uh, AI. Uh, we want uh, people to understand the behavior of AI, identify performance issues, safety, privacy concern, biases, and unintended outcomes. It's really related to the other principles uh, in a way that uh, we should understand AI and not be afraid uh, of it, for example. Those who use the AI system uh, should be honest and forthcoming about when, why, and how uh, they choose to uh, deploy the AI systems, for example. And finally, accountability. People should be accountable for AI systems. Uh, the people who design, deploy, and build on top of AI systems uh, must be accountable uh, about how the system operates. So even when you create something using AI, you should think about accountability uh, to make sure that you build and you use AI responsibly. Microsoft uh, Power Platform features, including the new ones that were just announced, they have been designed and are aligned with this principle. Uh, for example, uh, all the AI experiences always involve humans in the process um, who are responsible for approving, tracking, and validating the suggestions that have been generated by AIs. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I've had the, the pleasure of testing out some of these new AI functionalities on the Power Platform, and I've noticed as you go over those, those responsible AI principles that I've seen each of those in practice with what's been implemented so far, um, like especially in some of the templates, like it's always noting when um, a response is generated by AIs for that transparency there and uh, different things, having a, a human uh, check the responses and all of that. So it's good to see that, I, that I've noticed that in the product. And, and speaking of which, you know, I've had a chance to look at some of this stuff and how these responsible AI practices are, are put in place. But do you have a demo maybe that you could show us on an example of how we apply some of these responsible AI practices in the solutions we build in the Power Platform? Yes, of course. Uh, I will show you AI Builder and the new Azure Open AI pre-built model in AI Builder and how we have implemented the responsible AI principles. Let me share my screen. Uh, I am on the Power Automate portal on the AI Builder homepage, and this is the new model, uh, pre-built AI Builder model using Azure OpenAI model. Uh, so here is an example. I want to summarize a text using this model, and I'm super happy because I found this super article about Arctic Fox, uh, and I would want it to be uh, summarized. So. The first thing, it, it feels very natural, but we have put in place an experience to try the AI model before using it uh, in production or in your business's process. So you can test it out to immediately get results and evaluate whether the model fits what you want it to do or if you need to change, for example, the instructions. You will notice that uh, we are always disclosing that the content is AI generated and that it can context, contain and that it can contain um, mistakes or be inaccurate. So we strongly encourage people to review the result. And of course, uh, in order uh, to be able to improve the AI and the way uh, the results are returned, it's always useful to provide feedback. And this way, you can also report if you see anything that is biased, offensive, or if something went wrong uh, during the text generation. This is uh, in AI Builder homepage when you discover the model and when you're happy with it, you can use it in automation. I've just done that earlier today by creating a simple flow in Power Automate. Uh, this is simple. Sometimes I read interesting articles and I want to send it as a summary for example, by email to a set of colleagues. So this is my flow. When I will paste an, an, an article, uh, the text of an article, I want the Azure OpenAI model to summarize it. And again, uh, we are disclosing the fact that the content is AI generated and that users make, should make sure to review it uh, because it could be inaccurate or inappropriate. And we have also put in place the same experience to test the model in order to make sure that you can use a wide variety of inputs and data uh, and validate that it behaves as you expect. This is, this is how you set up how you want the model to behave, and that is already pretty transparent. Uh, but one other step is very important. As I mentioned earlier, we want people to be at the center of these responsible AI principles. And we want to have uh, a human in the loop when it comes to using AI. Uh, and this is the step here that I have created, is adding an approval step to make sure that the content generated by AI will always be reviewed by a human before it's used further in my automation. Uh, here, it's by, here it's by sending an email, but it could be uh, saving somewhere in my system. So I want uh, a human to review this content and validate that it can be used. I'm simply creating a message and asking to review the summary. I can show you how it looks uh, once I run the flow. Let me show you my other screen. Here is my email once I have run uh, the flow. I have received an approval message 
to validate the content that the model has generated, I had pasted a very interesting article uh, about the Abel price in physics. And the model generated a summary using these bullet points. And that was very interesting and also accurate. So I clicked approve. If I had clicked reject, the flow would have stopped and the content would not have been used, uh, preventing to propagate the inaccuracy, for example. And at the end of the day, here I am the recipient of the email, but that could be my colleagues too. Uh, the, the summary has been sent because I had approved that the content was correct. And that is how the AI Builder team has built an experience following the responsible AI principles, but it's also encouraging users to implement uh, flows and apps using uh, responsible AI uh, principles. Uh, like validating, for example, and reviewing the content. Well, I, I love that demo. I'm, I'm a big fan of the the new AI builder model with uh, Azure OpenAI in there to be able to do all kinds of things like summarizing, like you saw, and then and how clearly responsible AI practices were, were thought in that. And I know a lot of the templates, you know, that's that's by design where it has that approval step like you showed in there as well to, so that a, a real life human kind of checks it, make sure everything's kosher there. So um, thank you so much for showing that demo. Now, before we go, I would love to, if you could share for resources for people to learn more about responsible AI and how to start implementing these uh, principles and their solutions. Of course, uh, Microsoft's Office of Responsible AI has a website with resources covering the principles in details, uh, a standard evaluation process, uh, technical tooling and libraries, as well as uh, governance practices. Uh, all these help foster positive impact of AI. Uh, for example, the Responsible AI Standard is a playbook that we also use internally at Microsoft uh, to evaluate all AI system and make sure that their uh, impact uh, can be assessed. Um, each team can decide how to build, control, and deploy their AI systems uh, using this framework. Finally, and this is very important, make sure to read the documentation uh, and the transparency notes. Uh, all of uh, these are available in Microsoft documentation for each AI product, and uh, they are giving very precious information about how uh, this particular AI feature is expected to work, uh, what are uh, its limitations um, and how you should use it to build uh, your own AI feature responsibly on top uh, of, of them. Um, I should add um, something. We're still learning. Uh, responsible AI uh, is a new field. AI is growing every day. Uh, so as we uh, learn together, we can also innovate and accelerate together responsibly. Yeah, exactly. Great point. And like, you know, obviously we talked about these responsible AI principles in the terms of power platform today, but this applies to any solution, anything you're developing that's using AI like this, these same principles apply um, across all that. So definitely an important concept to kind of understand and uh, apply to your day-to-day -day when you're using these functionalities. So thank you so much, Cedric, for coming on the show and sharing more about this and helping us all learn more about responsible AI. Thanks a lot. All right. Happy to innovate responsibly together. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Low Code Revolution.